Legos are one of my favorite toys growing up, and today we're going to use them to talk about reference populations. Howdy, my name is Andy Lee with Family History Fanatics, and this is a segment of DNA. Now, I've used Legos before to talk about DNA because they're colorful, Legos are something that people understand, and we can use them to simplify a lot of concepts. And so today, I want to use Legos to talk about how our DNA is compared to the reference databases so that we can get our ethnicity or admixture results. Now, if you watched part one, I told you that first off, we need to have a reference database made, and each company has a different reference database. So you can think of the reference databases as comprising of a groups of people that each have all the same color of Legos. So for instance, this is somebody from Africa represented by red. This is somebody from Europe represented by blue. This is somebody from Asia or the Americas represented by yellow. And this is the Ashkenazi Jewish population represented by green. Now, when we're comparing our DNA, what we're looking at is we're looking at each of these people and seeing how it matches up and which it most closely matches to. The first thing that companies will do is they will take your DNA and they will break it up into all these little tiny segments. And there may be hundreds or thousands of those overall segments on your overall DNA that they're looking at. And each one of these little segments they are going to compare to the reference database and see, hey, in this spot right here, which one does this match? And in this case, we can see that, hey, this matches the African population. And they will do that all along your genome and come up with a first draft of what your ethnicity is. And it might look something like this. Now, this is simplified. It's shortened down. Like I said, normally they would have hundreds or even thousands of segments. This just has 10 segments. But after coming up with that first draft, then they're going to take a look at this and do some statistical smoothing of it. So, for instance, as you're looking along here, you can see that, hey, there's this nice segment of red altogether. Then we have this segment of yellow, blue, yellow, then a smaller segment of red and another segment of green. What the smoothing does is it looks at these places where it might be a mistake. So for instance, that blue, is that really blue or is that another yellow? And by doing some statistical analysis of it, they may decide to change this to a yellow. Now the way that I portrayed this here is each segment is only going to have one color. But in actuality, each segment is going to have a percentage of what it most likely is. In other words, it's probably not going to be a perfect match for red, so in this case, Africa, but it might be a 70% match or an 80% match for Africa. And so that's why it's being reported as Africa. As you get into different regional segments, so for instance, maybe from a continental level now to a country level or a, you know, even a county level inside of it in some cases, they're looking at DNA from those populations and coming up with some percentage that is the threshold for when they say, hey, this is from that. After they've done that for your whole genome, after they've done the smoothing to eliminate any potential errors that there is, then they will give you the results that show X percent is this, Y percent is this, and so on. So again, just to remind you, this represents the reference database where these people all have DNA that is from wherever that reference population is. Whereas you and most everybody else in the world is being compared to that and seeing what parts on your genome are most closely matched by one of these parts over here. And that is how your ethnicity results are reported to you. Now, again, this is really simplified. If you go onto the 23andMe website and look at their ethnicity results, they have links to their ancestry composition that they explain in more detail how this process actually works. 
But if you have a question about how your ethnicity results are calculated, put them in the comments below and we'll try to answer it for you. Connect with us on Twitter at FH Fanatics or on Facebook, Family History Fanatics, where we can interact with you and respond to your comments.